I rode Sunday before heading down to Tucson to see the folks. And on Sunday, I was like, man, it's weird. Gears are jumping around, shifting kind of odd. And uh, check this out. So I'm investigating like why it would be jumping around with the DI2 system, right? And I just put a new chain on the bike. So I was like, well, maybe it needs a new cassette because the cassette's worn out. No, not the case. Check out what's going on. As you see here, but sorry about the lighting's not that good. We got an extra little gap there. Something ain't right. So yeah, at first glance, it looks like we have a broken cassette. Here's what happened. This part of the Durace cassette, the center gear, has literally broke apart at the pins and now has become, well, you lodge anyway. So it might be warrantyable, I don't know. We're gonna find out. But for now, a uh, new cassette going on the bike. Okay, that was a good little effort. Uh, yeah, I tried to keep, try to keep my heart low, try to keep the cadence low, try to work on strength, stay out of saddle, concentrate on pulling, pushing. You know, I think uh, we don't talk about pulling a lot, but up those steep grades, creating a circle in your head, pulling on the way up, use the hamstrings. It teaches you, uh, it activates those muscles for when you need them for like a sprint, um, coming out and working on that. I know it's real basic ideas, but just stuff is going through my head right now after that climb. Uh, yeah, so pull and push, make a circle. As you're pulling, you're pushing, pulling, pushing. I mean, a lot of times we don't, we forget about that. And you could be halfway up a climb and, uh, <clears throat> and you've never done any pulling. Obviously in saddle it's hard too. Practice out of saddle. I, I feel like I have to do both, I've said it before. I feel like I can't just do one or the other. Look at this view. It's Paradise Valley right here. It is now 53 degrees. Your local time and temperature, 53 degrees, 1027 in the morning. I'm wearing a jacket, this is a, this is my favorite piece. 
few people were asking me uh, to talk about how I dress and why I dress a certain way and stuff like that. And I'll touch on it quickly. Maybe I do a more detailed uh, breakdown of what I what I wear when it's 40 to 50. It gets into the 30s here uh, early in the morning. When that happens, I'll have my ears covered. I'll have full finger gloves. Um, but like when it's like 50, I left the house this morning. It was 49. I love this this jacket. I look. Oslo's doesn't give me anything. I think their stuff's overpriced for a lot of their items. But when it comes to a quality jacket, um, spend a little extra money. Uh, if you spend a little more money on a jacket, you get one that breathes, has the windbreak in the front, uh, really breathable in the side and the back, nice pockets, um, <clears throat> the arms. There's a lot of technology in this jacket that allows you to wear it uh, over a broad temperature range, which matters to me in the desert because I can leave and it can be you know in the 30s by the time I'm done with the ride it's in the 60s mid 60s so it needs to be able to do both my go-to just a light summer base layer super thin uh I can unzip the jacket you know cool down zip it back up on the descents type thing this is kind of my go-to setup now I'm a big proponent of covering your knees up if it's in the 50s 40s guys I, look if you're in your 30s and you want to be mobile when you're in your 70s, 80s, cover your knees up. That's one thing that I, I, I don't remember who talked about it online on YouTube somewhere, but I read early and it's joint health. So I hate knee warmers. If you guys have ridden with knee warmers, you know why, because it has that little, that super tight band around your leg. So my go-to um, right now is Specialized makes a knicker. I really like this thing, it's 200 bucks. I love the knicker because I just I throw it on and it's good till, you know, 60 degrees. And uh, it, it makes a world of difference. I have full length um, tights. I'll wear those, you know, when it's 30 degrees when I leave the house. And I'm getting done basically as the sun's rising. Uh, I have toe warmers. I have some Gore-Tex gloves that I wear when it's 30. That's about it. But I like the knicker because I do not like knee warmers. I hate that banner on the top of your leg. Uh, and I hate how tight they feel in your legs. There's a, there's, a, there's a good amount of compression, I think, and then there's just way too much tension on your muscle that needs to expand and contract blood, and that's why I wear the knicker. Um, yeah, so a couple of things I didn't show you the warm up. I did a little warm up and then I just uh, pound out this climb. I'm gonna go pound a couple more climbs out. Let's go do that. Okay guys, this is a climb in the area, well known. Here's the leaderboard on Strava. I don't do this a lot, but this is a KOM that I really, really want. Uh, I made one effort at this, one hard effort. I went about 98% uh, in April. You see April 3rd there. Um, I'm, I want this climb. Uh, you see the top 10 here. Uh, some people with power meters, some people without power meters. Um, it's a, it's a tricky climb. I know most people had lead outs. I'm going for this one, guys. I'm going to work hard at it. I'm going to go for it. This is also something that uh, is great training. It's a great little interval here. It's got all the bite at the end. Um, some heavy hitters on this list here. Uh, Travis Dunkley, number one. Ryan Petrie, myself, Matt French, Ethan Milstein, Jack Gillick, Johnny Corcoran, we know him. Scotty Wood, Jake Spellman, we know him. Aaron Moser. Uh, four guys on my team on this top 10 here. So uh, anyway, take a look here and we'll, uh, we'll talk to you at the top.
you gotta have a possibly a lead out maybe even a tailwind i don't know that's the problem with strava is strava for road stuff <sighs> unless you're going going after what phil's going after you need lead outs you need tailwinds stuff like that but i'm gonna try for it anyway but today's just training just a little strength training a little opener for the week as i pull over here check this out i don't see this very often Those to me look like uh, blackberries, like wild blackberries on the side of this hill in the middle of the desert. I don't know why, I thought that was cool. Pretty little area up here, Sage. It's my favorite climb, I like it. I, I, I think I'd like to try to do the Red Bull Hill Climb next year. My boy Jack. The pedal mafia says he can says he can get me in thinks i'll do okay so this will be my hill to train on for that it's a good one and a half minute effort uh if you really punch it i think my best up this hill i somewhere in there did like 720 watts for a minute at 162 pounds it's put me right at like 10 watts per kilo which would put me in the neighborhood of possibly being able to try to do that so anyway all right, uh, I think we're good. I'm gonna roll home now. I think we're good. Hey, listen guys, a lot of things happen with the channel. I'm trying to make this channel a reality. I I'm getting so much positive feedback and I'm getting so many people into cycling. I, I just love, I love this community so much and I wanna get more people into it. I want more people to see that they can do this, um, that they can start out like me eating fast food, eating McDonald's and being uh, uh, obese and getting this lifestyle and, and completely remap themselves so I'm trying to set up my life in a different way that allows me to bring you more videos um, in doing so uh, look I don't like asking for help um, obviously I don't have a lot of subscribers in the grand scheme of YouTube so I've set up a patreon uh, account it's totally optional I'm not gonna do anything differently I'm gonna to try to bring you two videos a week uh, regardless. But down below in the description is the Patreon link. Uh, it goes directly to me, to this channel, and it'll go directly back into the channel. I've been really wanting to buy a new camera. I've been using my phone for most of these recordings like I am now. Um, I, wanna, I wanna bring new content. I wanna do different stuff. So anyway, I've started a Patreon link. It's a dollar a month is all I'm asking. Uh, I figure, you know, 20 bucks here, 20 bucks there. We can, uh, we can, I can, I can help get more people into this community, and I'm eventually going to tell the story of why I got into this um, for you guys, so you guys, all you new subscribers, can hear that story. Look, I, I want to make this channel work. I, I, I really do. So I set up the Patreon, set up a new Instagram account. It's just for Cycling Virgin. Uh, I'm going to keep Cycling Virgin the name going. I'm going to bring you guys T-shirts so you can represent that you're a virgin like me on a bike. Um, anyway, little update. Thanks for coming along with me today on my uh, day off, little uh, easy spin. Hope you guys like it. Uh, like, subscribe, and we'll talk to you next time.